Top 5 times Gypsy Rose Blanchard was the villain. First off, some people believe that Gypsy Rose is fame hungry even though she tries to hide it. The 32 year old was recently released from prison after 8 years for orchestrating a brutal crime against her mother Dee Dee Blanchard. She now has more than 9 million followers on TikTok. The idolization of Gypsy Rose shouldn't be a total surprise considering the internet loves cult followings of criminals. But Gypsy's story also isn't a simple one. Many people think that she was wrongly imprisoned in the first place. Dee Dee is believed to have suffered from a disorder known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which led her to subject her daughter to years of unnecessary medical treatments. This included using a wheelchair and getting two salivary glands removed. Since her release, Gypsy hasn't wasted any time throwing herself into the media circuit. She's gone on The View, given a handful of exclusive interviews, and gained millions of followers on TikTok and Instagram. Popular influencers have also helped boost her platform. There was even a crazy rumor going around that she might win the title of Time's Next Person of the Year. Her attitude and enthusiasm to lean into her stardom have made her a darling of the internet. Fans have been calling her a queen and commending her courage after everything that she's been through. Despite her video updates having the slightly clumsy quality of someone who's never been on the internet, most people have welcomed Gypsy Rose with open arms. She currently has over 9 million followers on TikTok and 8 million on Instagram. YouTubers are begging her to appear on their podcasts, and media outlets are scrabbling over each other to landed interview. But that's not really surprising. Her story has always been incredibly fascinating and stomach turning at the same time, especially with all those documentaries, articles and TV adaptations. Gypsy has always been a bit of a sustained internet celebrity, even while she was in prison. So the internet was ready for her when she was finally released. People were rooting for her to succeed because her story was so horrific. And now they get to see what she actually does with her freedom. But the people who say she's become too fame hungry tend to bring up the fact that she is now a millionaire. According to one source, her net worth has reached an estimated $3 million. Now, how does one who spends nearly 9 years in prison with no previous employment experience end up becoming a millionaire upon their release? Well, her financial status is undeniably linked to her unexpected prominence as a public figure. The documentaries and true crime adaptations featuring her have not only contributed to her net worth, but they've also fueled the ongoing public interest in her case. From participating in documentaries that delve into the complexities of her case, to citing book deals that offer readers insights into her life, she has strategically leveraged her unique experiences. All of that contributed to her overall income. Does that mean she's really a bad person? Well, not really. She does need to make a new life for herself after everything that she's been through, and she clearly hopes to start a family soon. That brings us to our next point. She was seen controlling her husband. So a few weeks ago, there was a viral clip that went around on TikTok. During an interview, Gypsy basically told her husband to shut up when he said something that was a little bit embarrassing. Gypsy was talking about what it was like spending all the those years in prison and the fact that she has changed a lot over that time period. She jokes around and says, oh, I went from 19 to 32 so quick. Jeez, I can't believe I got so old. This is when Ryan says, you never went to school either. Gypsy is clearly very embarrassed by this comment and quietly tells Ryan to shut up. But she says it under her breath while the camera was still rolling and you can see her smiling. After that, her husband looks completely defeated and he puts his head down, refusing to speak. At other points in the interview, you can actually see Gypsy squeezing his arm when she wants him to be quiet. And even though the quality of the video isn't that great, it's pretty clear that she's found a way to stop him talking whenever she wants to. The whole thing seems a bit like a toxic relationship. But not only that, people in the comment section seem to believe that Gypsy Rose is becoming just as controlling as her mother. One person wrote, Gypsy needs to be in therapy, not doing multiple interviews. And Gypsy is shushing Ryan the same way her mother did to her. She's doing the same nudge that Dee Dee did when she would hold Gypsy's hand. Another person wrote, Gypsy is manipulative. She learned this from her mom. If they break up, he's going to spill the beans. Now, this is pretty crazy, but not everyone thinks that way. Of course, there were also those people who were defending her in the comments, saying that Ryan deliberately tried to embarrass her by saying that she had never gone to school. Either way, it's obvious that all these tell all interviews are not the best thing for their relationship. On April 12th of 2019, Gypsy was reported to be engaged to a prison pen pal. Ryan Scott Anderson started writing to her after he watched the HBO documentary Mummy Dead and Dearest. Which which tells Gypsy's story. They knew each other for about a year and a half and Gypsy's family approved of him. In an interview, she later talked about her morning wedding with Ryan, saying it was very, very small. We didn't have any guests. It was just something for him. In the future, she said they do plan on having a bigger reception, like a redo wedding with all of their family and their friends and the dress and the cake. Quote, our prison wedding was just something to where we could make our vows to each other. Oh, if I had another chance to redo everything, I don't know if I would go back to when I was a child and tell my aunts and uncles 
uncles that I'm not sick and mummy makes me sick. Gypsy went on to say, no one will ever hear me say I'm glad she's gone or proud of what I did. I regret it every single day. Her decision to have Dee Dee's life ended came after she tried to run away ahead of another needless procedure. She claims that she fled her home only to be tracked down within hours. After years of reflection, self-work and therapy, when talking about Dee Dee, Gypsy says that she just did not deserve that. But that brings us to our next point, the fact that Gypsy initially lied about committing the crime. On June 14th, 2015, sheriff's deputies found Dee Dee Blanchard face down in the bedroom of her house, lying on the bed because of wounds inflicted several days earlier. There was no sign of Gypsy who, according to Dee Dee, had chronic conditions like leukemia, asthma, muscular dystrophy, and who had the mental capacity of a seven-year-old, apparently due to brain damage. The following day, police found Gypsy Rose in Wisconsin, where she had traveled with her then boyfriend, Nicholas Gojon, whom she had met online. Turns out she let him into the home and allegedly gave him duct tape, gloves, and a knife, with the understanding that he would use it to end Dee Dee's life. Nicholas then carried out the crime while she was asleep. The two of them fled together, and Wisconsin police arrested them at Nick's parents' home. This was a few days after Gypsy posted graphic messages from her mom's Facebook page. The disturbing part is some of those posts are still up on Facebook today. It's chilling to see it and read all of the comments of people getting worried for Dee Dee and Gypsy. During Gypsy's interrogation, she acted shocked to hear that her mother had her life ended. She said, I don't know what happened with my mom. Why don't you just tell me? The officer then looks at her and says, you know what happened to your mom, I know that you know. At this point, Gypsy refuses to admit anything. And she says, you think that it was me? Why do you think that it's me? I've always loved my mom. My mom and I are best friends. She continued to maintain her innocence until Nick eventually revealed the truth. During a prison phone call with her dad, she tells him what was being said about her in the news was not true and swears that she really was innocent. Eventually, her and Nick were both formally arrested and when Gypsy's attorney obtained her medical records from Louisiana, he secured a plea bargain and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. As we all know though, she ended up getting out of prison early. Next up, we have the fact that her illnesses were fake. So despite everything everyone was told by Gypsy and her mother she was not actually sick. Her mother was. Dee Dee had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is a mental disorder where a parent exaggerates, fabricates, or actually induces illness in a person under their care to try and get sympathy or attention. Dee Dee had been making her daughter pass herself off as younger and pretended to be disabled and chronically ill, subjecting her to unnecessary surgery and medication and controlling her through physical and psychological mistreatment. Gypsy was not aware of this and when she found out that she could walk and wasn't fully sick, that's when she came up with her plan to end the life of her mother. After the disclosure of how Dee Dee had treated Gypsy, sympathy for Dee Dee as a victim shifted to her daughter as a long-term victim of mistreatment. Gypsy is quoted at Nick's trial in 2018 saying, if it weren't for Nick and how dark he was, I wouldn't have gone through with it. And to this day, she still blames Nick for the whole thing, even though it was technically her idea. Apparently, Nick wanted the crime to be committed in a much more gruesome way. He wanted it to be messy, but Gypsy was headstrong about about calling the shots. After all, it was her mother. During the trial, she explained under oath how a tasteless and odorless poison was too hard to find, that arson would be too complicated and a firearm would be too messy. So she stole a hunting knife from Walmart and mailed Nick more than $1,000 that she stole from Dee Dee. He was to purchase a round trip bus ticket for himself and a one way trip for Gypsy to join him back in Wisconsin. The rest of the money was for food and a room at a nearby Days Inn hotel. Now what's somewhat funny is that Nick got a harsher sentence than Gypsy, even though she was supposedly the mastermind. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And now onto the last point, the fact that Gypsy was keeping in touch with Nick. Gypsy has said that she was still pining over Nick while they were in the county jail. They exchanged letters by hiding them in the recreation room and writing love messages on the wall. Later, when they were both in prison, the former couple exchanged only two letters. When Nick found out that she was engaged to another man, he accused her of adultery and said that they were still married under God's law. She replied that she never wanted to get back together with him but still felt a sense of guilt, which is why she testified on his behalf at the trial. So there was still something between them long after the actual crime had been committed, which is a secret that Gypsy seemed to be hiding from the world. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think she's a real villain? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you all in the next video.